Welcome to part 3 of my Cartier Craze series where I discuss the Cartier tank and its alternatives. Now I know that the term iconic is often overused, but the tank must is truly an iconic watch. Okay, I promise I won't say the word iconic again. But to me, the tank sets the benchmark for a timeless design with the right balance of simplicity and class. After owning the watch myself, I truly understand all the hype around the tank. But a quartz watch at three and a half thousand dollars is a hard pill to swallow. I debated whether this watch was worth its price tag in my tank review that you can watch here. A slightly more niche and upscale alternative to the regular tank must is the Tank American. This mechanical watch borrows some styling elements from the Centre while maintaining its tank DNA. I think it's a great balance between sophistication and watchmaking. You can watch my review of the Tank American over here, and it will also be linked below the like button. But there's no denying that both of these are expensive watches. Not everyone has or wants to spend thousands of dollars on a watch. This video is for the collector who wants a great tank alternative without spending even five hundred dollars. I'll present three substitutes for the tank, starting with the most affordable option. And my third pick may not be an exact tank alternative, but it's a great sub five hundred dollar option, has a mechanical movement, and is by far my favorite watch on this list. And right at the end, I'll feature a totally hidden gem as a bonus fourth alternative. Okay, let's get started. The first tank alternative is this watch, the Sanda Tank. Sanda is a Chinese brand which seems to make homages of many famous watches. And as you can tell, this is pretty much a standard case of, "Hey, dude, can I copy your homework?" Sure, sure, but change it a little so it's not obvious. Yeah, of course, of course. And this is the result. The design is meant to mimic a tank in all ways. The watch comes on a Cartier-style strap and deployment clasp, and even has a blue cabochon. Now I generally don't suggest straight knockoffs of famous watches, but I would recommend this watch to someone who's never tried a rectangular watch and wants to get a feel of it. Just trying a watch like this might give you a good idea if you'd like a shaped watch instead of spending thousands of dollars to find out. What's better is that at less than twenty US dollars, this is a watch that everyone can afford and wear just for the fun of it. In terms of dimensions, this Chinese watch measures twenty-eight millimeters wide by thirty-five millimeters long. A thickness of seven millimeters and has a lug width of twenty millimeters. So the Sanda tanks were slightly bigger than the regular Cartier tank large, which is a couple of millimeters smaller in all dimensions. Like the tank must, the Sanda tank is also a quartz watch. The Cartier tank is naturally a better watch in every conceivable way, but this watch, that's two hundred times cheaper, delivers quite a good package. While the build quality isn't the best, it still feels like a solid package with very good finishing for the price. The dial is white with Roman numerals and blued hands. Honestly, I can't find any visual imperfections on it with my naked eyes. It certainly doesn't look like a poorly assembled watch. The steel case feels ordinary but not cheap. All in all, the watch seems better built than its price would suggest. Just do one thing: throw away the OEM strap and put this watch on any other leather strap. I promise you, the wearing experience will be so much better. I just enjoy the worry-free experience of wearing this tank homage anywhere without stressing about damaging or losing it. After all, the watch costs less than three drinks at Starbucks. To summarize, I think this is a really good value watch for what it offers. Get this watch if you want to get a feel for the tank, or to just have some fun, but don't expect a tank killer. The second alternative to the must is the Seiko SWR zero four nine. Now this is a Seiko. What's more to say? You know it's going to be decently built with reliable performance and overall just a good value timepiece. And at under two hundred dollars, it's definitely good value for your money. Again, the design of this watch is clearly inspired by the Cartier tank, but unlike the Sanda, the Seiko has managed to change the homework a little more, deviating slightly from the tank design by adding its own touches like the slimmer Roman numerals, black hands, different case size and shape, and a black spinel instead of a blue one. The Seiko tank is bigger than the large size Cartier tank and is sized more like a tank must excel with a case that's 28 and a half millimeters wide by 38 millimeters tall and 6 millimeters thick. Inside is a Seiko quartz movement. Now the one bad thing about this design is the odd 23 millimeter lug width. But at least the leather strap that comes on the Seiko SWR049 is pretty decent. It's equipped with a pin buckle and wears well without being too thick or thin. Due to its dimensions, the watch provides a larger wrist presence than the Cartier Tank Large, which, despite its name, can feel small to some. Personally, I prefer the smaller dimensions, but to each his own. Why I like this watch is because it's a really good tank homage without being a complete knockoff. 
It's well built for its price, it's unobtrusive, and it just gets the job done. Also being a Seiko, you know it's going to have reliable performance for several years. If you own this or any other Seiko tank variants, let me know your experience with them. I'd love to hear real owner stories. But that's all well and good and both of these were quartz watches. If you don't want to be a muggle with a quartz watch, there are several mechanical options available, none better than the Laurier Zephyr. While the tonneau shaped Zephyr isn't exactly a tank look alike, I think it's similar enough. More importantly, I love this watch and I really want to recommend it to anyone looking for a beautiful dress watch around $500. For some context, Laurier is an American independent brand founded by Lauren and Lorenzo Ortega who are based in New York. Laurier make vintage inspired, value focused watches that I really like. A few months ago, I reviewed their dive watch, the Neptune and loved it. And today I'm presenting their art deco inspired dress watch. Despite being a dress watch, Laurier stressed that you don't need to dress up to wear this watch. So I took the advice and in my time with the watch, I literally wore it everywhere. From the office to the dog park and even when hiking outdoors. While taking this watch hiking may or may not be the best idea, you can certainly rock it on a daily basis. And Laurier always say that their watches are meant to be worn. Behind a closed case back, the Zephyr features an automatic Miyota 9029 no date movement that beats at 28800 bph or 4Hz and has a power reserve of 42 hours. This is generally a good reliable movement that can be serviced easily. In any case, it's an excellent choice in a watch that costs less than $500. The Zephyr comes in three dial colors, red, black and white, and each variant comes with two straps. And these straps are just top notch. They combine the right balance of suppleness and rigidity and don't take too long to break in. And they are super comfortable. I really mean it. These were some of the best OEM straps from a sub thousand dollar watch that I've experienced. The white dial version comes with a black and an orange strap. While the black strap lends the watch a more conservative formal look, the orange strap is more playful. I love the contrast of the orange strap with the white dial and mostly ended up using that one. Now one thing to note is that I did see some scratches, uh, I mean patina, on the strap after just a couple of weeks. So the strap might show a fair bit of scratches, uh, sorry, I mean patina, after regular use. The Zephyr features extremely wearable dimensions, coming in at 31mm wide by 42mm tall, with a 8mm thick case. As you can see, the watch looks great on my 6 inch wrist. Being so slim, the watch wears nice and flat and can easily slide underneath a dress cuff. The highlight for me, however, is the dial. The Zephyr's dial features a beautiful guilloche pattern with a radial sunburst effect as an added bonus. The dial text is restrained with only Laurier, New York and automatic printed on it. Overall, it's a very clean yet refined look. When I first saw the watch, I couldn't believe that a sub $500 watch could look so classy. But Laurier have managed to do that. The dial is truly handsome in all ways and just gives the impression of a more expensive watch. Now I know I'm sounding like a Laurier fanboy, but I promise you I haven't been sponsored by Laurier to say all this. I really love the watch. The only drawback for me was that the timepiece doesn't come on a manually wound movement. To me, the watch looks like it's screaming to be powered by a manual movement to truly embody the early 20th century vibe. When I asked the founders the reason, they informed me that most of the manual movements they tested did not meet their desired performance criteria and the one that did was way too expensive to put in this watch. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But I'll still keep my fingers crossed to see a manually wound Zephyr in the future. Tell me what's your movement preference? Do you prefer having an automatic movement for the convenience? Or do you like winding your watch every other day for the more intimate connection? Now as promised, here's the fourth option. This is a vintage, hand-wound tank lookalike from Kapilar Riem. Please forgive me if I butchered the name. But Kapilar Riem is a small French brand that primarily makes watches, movements and jewellery. I found their version of the tank from a seller on Reddit and managed to get a great deal on it for just a couple of hundred dollars. This watch was somewhat of a hidden gem for me. And even after a lot of digging, I couldn't find much information on the watch. However, I found that the watch was produced sometime in the 60s or 70s and I did verify that the watch was serviced recently and runs very well for its age. In fact, this manual movement has one of the best winding feel I've experienced. Just have a listen to this. Wow, I can't believe how crisp and tactile the winding feels. 
and the watch runs pretty accurately too. And it wears perfectly, just like the Cartier tank. I don't wear this watch regularly, but when I do, it just makes me smile. All this is to say that the tank has been so influential since its conception that hundreds of brands have made their own versions of it. So many hidden and affordable tank alternatives are available if you look around. So you don't need to go for the usual suspects from the bigger brands if you find a hidden gem that you really like. That's it from me today. I want to know, would you consider buying any of these watches? Also, please let me and the other viewers know in the comments if you know of any other tank alternatives. I'm sure all of us would love to discover more options. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing. See you next time for some fresh baked pizza. Peace.